Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, December 12, 2019, and this is the week in charts. A little housekeeping real quick. I might not do a show next week, and then the Thursday and the Thursdays after that, I think, if I check the calendar right, I need to recheck it, or Christmas and New Year's, respectively. So might not be any shows till the end of the year. I've been swamped lately trying to catch up with a lot of things. So anyway, so just check my homepage for a show announcement for the next show. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Seems like people have had trouble finding the show in more recent times, and that's something I'm going to have to work on for next year. Maybe I'll do that in my quote-unquote downtime, so to speak, in between. Just make a little air quotes. Okay, what are we talking about? Well, obviously, we're going to talk about the market itself. Is it a new bull leg? Well, so far, so good, obviously. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them on the slides, and then when we get to the live charts, you can ask about anything. Speaking of which, ask about one stock at a time for your favorite stock picks, and that's just for your benefit to make sure that I look at each and every one of them and don't actually delete one. All right, the, today's show started out sort of like the methodology in action, and that's something that I did last, well, last couple of, well, two weeks ago, I think, or three weeks ago at StockCharts.com, in my StockCharts.com TV show. And then yesterday in the show, I also did kind of a follow-up type of thing, but more so how I picked the stocks, but it was kind of like a combination of the the plays and on. I was going to do a lot of that today, and then I decided because I got really busy working on an opening gap reversal trade that I would talk about my ongoing quest. And my ongoing quest is, we'll get to that in just one second, but put it this way, if I succeed, I'll own the world and you'll never see my fat ass again. But all kidding aside, even if I just do okay, I'll still be doing quite well. Now, before we get into all that, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or is all the sudden up. Here it comes. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then stealing a line from my buddy Greg Morris. My ongoing quest is have the short-term trading pay for the long-term trading. Now, that's a bit of a lofty goal, but I think that there's a lot of things you could do to help accomplish that goal. And yes, if you did accomplish that goal, you would end up owning the world. Now, before we talk about that, let's just take a quick step back. And I took this slide literally last minute, like two minutes ago, from my trading full circle course, where I was comparing short term versus long term trading. Here's the deal only the short term can be predicted with any degree of accuracy. These the years coming up, in the years coming up, and you're going to have people looking ahead to 2009 and 20 and say, oh, this is going to do well and that's going to do well. And it's like, you know, like they said in Caddyshack, no, you don't, Danny. Like they don't know. Nobody knows that far. If they knew that far, then they would own the world themselves. So you can only look so far out when it comes to a market. That's why. I like swing trading so much because the market kind of gets pulled back in one direction and it's kind of like a rubber band. It tends to pop back in the other direction and that other direction is in the direction of the trend. And by the way, as you know, the only way to ever make money on a trade is to what? Capture a trend. So that's why I am a trend follower. The great thing about short-term tra trading is your risks are much smaller and better defined. In a longer term chart, you don't know where you're going to be wrong. Your stop would have to be to capture a long, long trend a long ways away from the chart. And if it gets hit, it's going to really, really hurt. But if you have that stop any closer, you're going to get knocked out of that longer term trend. Now, a lot of people complain in the end when the trend ends badly, and it does. And, and, and truth be told, I drop an F-bomb too at the end of the trend and the reason is you have to give positions a lot of room so what happens is what starts out as a correction can sometimes turn into 
something much more. For instance, let's say you're following along and let's say a stock's doing this longer term, okay? And you've got your trailing stop down here, okay? And if it's a great longer term trend, you're gonna have some corrections obviously along the way. Well, the problem is you don't know when that next correction comes along, whether it's gonna be just that or it's the beginning of a new trend. And a lot of people get angry because they gave up this much and it's kind of a big ouch. But I'm assuming we're in from way back here now, make it look a little better. They forget that they went from here to here and that might be 100%. I can think of one or two trades where it was 152% or more. And yeah, it might've been 200% up here, but you still did pretty well. And one thing that's kind of shocking to me is when I go back in and look at some of these things and I'm, I'm like, man, that really did suck. You know, I, I, I feel their pain because I feel your pain when that happens. But in some of these cases, I'll go in and it's like, let's say this is like three years backwards. Three years ago, we had a big, fat, nice trade. And then this stock will be up here somewhere like right up here, up 400% or 500%. So even though you gave up all this, if you'd have given up a little bit more, you would have captured an even longer term trend. So that's the big dilemma in the longer term trading. And then also there's a lot of other issues, which will I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Now here's the shortcoming of the short term trading or one of the shortcomings is that your gains are limited. You only can make so much over a short period of time. I mean, you might be, get really, really lucky once in a lifetime and capture a day trade to get a 50 point move or something like that. But that doesn't happen that often. I mean, I could think back to where, and I did not capture it like an idiot, I forgot to take, but I could think back in the go-go days, I recommended the stock in my trading markets column, forgot about it, and it had a very nice clean entry. It was a big cap stock, it was a, or fairly, liquid super liquid stock and i want to i want to say it was like red hat rht maybe rhat back then and the darn thing rallied 58 points in one day so that can happen but as a general statement your gains are limited big gains take time to develop in a market here's the other thing bad things can still happen i was at a conference as i say quite often full of day traders a few years back speaking to them and some of those guys would leverage their account several hundred percent on a trade now what happens if that stock gets halted intraday and they can't get out so that's the downside of short-term trading also if you're let's say you're day trading as a general statement you're going to have to leverage up to make any money because you could the market can only move so far in a short period of time. Now I'm talking about being a pure day trader going in and trying to make a lot of money as fast as you can. I'm gonna show you a day trading technique that I like quite a bit. I think everybody here knows it, but if you're watching the recording of this, maybe it'll be something new to you, where you don't risk a lot and you can make an okay amount of money. Now, longer term trend, again, it's very difficult to predict longer term trends. Your accuracy is going to be abysmal what did greg morris say he leaned over to me at a conference all predictions are about the future a lot of well, he actually said shit can happen between now and then right it's going to have high risk as i just showed in that longer term chart you're going to have really really big drawdowns now i kind of get a little angry with these people out there who who give these famous trend followers a hard time because these guys, some of these famous trend followers have blown up before. Well, they're just following their system, doing the right thing. But that's okay. Not that you want to blow up, but I mean, if they're following the system, doing what they're supposed to do, that's plausible. That's understandable. Now, my way around that is let me do some short-term trading to help pay for that longer-term trading and to transition into that longer-term trade so that I'm playing with the market's money, so to speak, or as Charlie Kirk called it after looking at my money management, free rolling. And that's what we'll get to in just one second. So again, high risk, but here's the beauty of the long-term trade. It's where the money is. Your gains are potentially unlimited. Now, of course, the longer you're in the market, the better the chances that something bad will happen. But here's the thing. Again, something bad can still happen with a shorter-term trade.
So if we take a look at the open portfolio, everything in white was a swing trade that was taken. And we're looking for 1% on a 100K account, risking 2% position, looking for a 1% initial profit target. So you'll notice those white numbers, in this particular case, they're all 1,000, but sometimes they'll be a little bit more or less depending on the market conditions. And the things that are still yellow are still on. Now, if you see a white one and then followed by a yellow one, that means that the swing trade has been taken, the thousand bucks off, okay, per thousand or hundred thousand, I should say. And then the remainder of that is the trend trade. Now, in some cases, you scratch out a remainder and that's just life. You have to be willing to dust yourself off and walk up, walk away and say, you know what? Overall, I made money. I'm, I'm happy with making money. That's That's fine with me. And you do that so you have the potential for the occasional big gain, such as a KOD, where, as you can see, it's up over 100% on that recent trade that we took. So once you get to where you've taken those initial profits off and you have your stop at break even, the worst that could happen, obviously, barring overnight gaps, of course, you know, it's there's no free ride, right? Something bad still could happen, but boring overnight gaps, you're in a great position, both mentally and monetarily. Now, it's obvious from a monetary standpoint, yeah, I'm kind of playing with the market's money, free roll, and however you want to look at it. But mentally, it's a great place to be. And I'm getting better at not getting as angry when I'm stopped out for a profit, or at least I should say, Truth be told, my anger doesn't last as long. I, I drop an F-bomb and then I'm like, you know what? Hey, I made money overall. What does Dave Landry say? Well, Dave Landry says, if you're still pissed off, send him the money. It's like, okay, well, I am Dave Landry, so I get to keep the money. And that's a beautiful thing. So let's take a look at a swing to, hopefully, and I need to come up with a cute way of saying this, swing to long-term or swing to, swing to long-term trade. So, here we have a TKO and PLMR. And by the way, and I'm going to show you at the end of this presentation where to get them, but if you want to look at these recommendations so you could see that they were not, in hindsight, you can go to, well, I'll give you the link now, www.davelander.com slash archives, and you can see the trading service archives. And if you want to see some things we talk about in Facebook, like a trade I'm going to show you in just one second, then just become a member, a gold member, that is, of DaveLandry.com. You have to be a gold member. I do that to keep the riffraff out. I'm half kidding. By the way, I've been loving that group. My wife was just telling me a few days ago how much my mood has improved, how much better my trading has become, how much better my attitude has become since I've been interacting with you guys and girls, and, and I want to thank you for that. She stopped short of putting a post out to you guys because she figured that would be the mother of all jinx. But anyway, so we had a TKO buy. Our stop was down here because we could be wrong on every trade, right? Or any trade. Initial profit target up here. And then it rallied up, hit the initial profit target. Our stop is now at break even. So now we're in a good position to hopefully, I don't know, just said hope, but hopefully ride out a longer term trend. And boring overnight gaps, when we get stopped out, so what? Okay, so what? Better than the poke in the eye, right? We, at least we played the game. Better to play the game and make a little than not play the game at all. And more importantly, play the game, make a little, and position yourself to make a lot. So think about this. Again, if we could figure out a way to make that short-term pay trading pay for longer-term trading, let's say we get a couple of swing trades here and there, and that goes against our drawdowns. By the way, and I stole this line from a book about the Kelly formula called the Fortunes Formula. I wrote about that book in one of my now columns, so you can go go read it. Uh, Kelly formula depends on a statistical normal distribution, which does not exist when it comes to markets. But anyway, the line I stole was, as a trend follower, you're going to spend your spin most of your time or the majority of your time less wealthy. You're going to be often giving up those profits. And it's fun to have up days, but you're going to have a lot of down days in between. The other thing too, and I've been criticized for saying this by one of my peers, but 
it can be streaky. You make a lot of money, you print money over a short period of time, and then you go back to grinding it out. And believe me, this last wave that we're in now, or I hope it could, or current wave, I should say, and let's hope it stays with us for a while. We're riding this wave, and it's absolutely fantastic. But it took a long time to get here. I went back to like the summer, and I went probably, I don't know if I went weeks, I have to go and look at the archives, but there were days and days and days, and probably at least a week or two, where there was nothing to do. And you know what most people do? They quit because they get bored. Well, trading done properly can be boring. It is kind of a lot like sailing. I was thinking about that. Hours of boredom interrupted by brief moments of sheer panic. So this is a slide we talked about last week. This was the TKO in the KOD. And the beauty of this thing was in the portfolio, I'm showing only a thousand point gain. And I have the trades, I put the trades, the actual screenshot into my column I did, or I should say the webinar I did yesterday, which would be 12, 11, 19 for stock charts. So you can check that out. But I was able to exit in the mid 40s, mid 50s, and even in the 70s on this one. So it was a very worthwhile trade. Still have some options on, and I'm coming every day and watch them decay, which is not fun, but I got the majority of the money out on this. But anyway, you could see by taking a little swing trade out, if this thing goes to the mood, in this case, a lot more than a swing trade if you applied a little bit of discretion, as some of you guys have. And I congratulate you for that. You can do quite well. Now, here's one on the downside. And here's the beauty. In this particular case, we had a sell short on a first thrust type of setup had our initial profit target. And then so far, it appears we may have captured the mother of all top now, tops. Now, as I often preach, you're not gonna get rich on the short side, but every now and then you'll do okay, as you can see here. And so far, initial profit target was hit and the stop was trailed lower. And by the way, notice on that particular chart, we spent a lot of time waiting and we spent a lot of time losing money until we finally made money. Now, play an, an ogre within a setup and with the trend. Now, let me just draw this in real quick. I borrowed a line from Linda Rasky's book. She had a, what was his name? Genghis was one of the traders that found himself working in her office. I think he told her that he would go shovel poop in the harsh stalls just to be around her. And she got him in the office trading. And uh, he was trading his own deal. And he would buy these opening gaps down in the S&P 500. And he called him the burning dog. So when you're looking with a market, and let's say you're trading an opening gap reversal. So a burning dog would be something that's in a downtrend. Or it could also be, it also could be basing sideways at a low, 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 low level and then have a gap lower, okay? And you're looking to capture that pop back in the direction of the trend. Now this, like, Dave, I thought you were a trend follower. Well, I am a trend follower and this goes against my trend following mantra. However, in something like an ETF, and I should say only in an ETF, I will occasionally consider these. Not my favorite thing to do. In fact, as soon as I get in one, I am looking to get out of it, okay? And it's hard for me to just ride out those automated stops that we're gonna talk about now. Okay, I'd much rather trade one that looks like this. You got a pullback in the daily chart, then you have a gap low and you look to trade that reversal or that reversion to the mean back in the direction of the trend. And these can, be pay off really nice this is where you can occasionally capture a trend day and makes it all worthwhile so let's take a look at that and we're going to kind of beat this setup to, to death this happened yesterday and here's my landry list for coming into 12 11 so this was published on the evening of 12 10. And by the way, you know, these, every oh, every time I try to stop, they draw me back in. It's like, now that I have uh, a show on 
StockCharts.tv. I sound like last week at Bandcamp with that. I realize that. But and I have my webinars going up on my week of charts going up on YouTube, which I've done for 10 years now, I guess. And then I have my market in a minute. It's like I spend a lot of time on YouTube. And of course, I've got, I'm, as my wife calls me, hobby boy. I do have a few hobbies I'm researching when I'm, I'm trying not to, but I get occasionally get sucked in like a moth. The rabbit hole sucks me in on some of these things. But anyway, long story endless, these idiots that are out there just trying to sell all this get rich quick stuff really makes me nuts. Now, some of the guys that may be doing okay, if you do enough research on them, you'll see that there's a bit of a sketchy gray area where they might be pumping and dumping. That means that they're telling you about a stock they just bought. And if they can get enough of you to hop on that stock, they could hop out of that stock at a profit. It's very disingenuous. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make there is I talk about everything ahead of time. Now, at some point in time, that, that could actually hurt me. But I'm going to do it as long as I can. Now, in the Facebook group yesterday, I wrote, I hate to tease, meaning that I don't want to tease. I hate to tease the people who aren't on the trading service. But check the Landry list for an ogre, an opening gap reversal, potential opening gap reversal. I'm just saying. And there was only a few stocks yesterday. So you could see that out of these few, if you went and looked at the actual charts, it was AQST. Now, this is a really beautiful looking chart. This is why I would put it on my potential Landry list. I actually wanted a slightly bit more pullback, and that's why I didn't put it as an official setup. So here's what happens. It gapped lower, sold off a little bit after initially trading higher a little bit, and then rallied nicely for the rest of the day, for the most of the day. And you can see it backed off towards the close. We'll pick that apart. So here's a five minute chart. And this is what it looked like during the first five minutes of trading. And if we enlarge that five minute chart to a one minute chart, we could see that most of that happened in the first minute of trading. In fact, the, the first one minute bar kind of looks like the entire five minute bar. So again, these are one minute bars. And I just wanted to show you that so you can see how it shook out. So my point is that the opening range was established in the first minute of trading. And that kind of gives you that, that go or no go. You don't know that it's gonna be established, right? So you first see the stock open and then immediately turn around and go straight up a little bit that gives you a tough no or go de no go decision. In a case like that, one thing you can do is you could use a very liberal entry well above that high, okay? And that way if it does, if it truly is a the mother of all opening gap reversals, you'll get triggered in. The trade-off and there's always a trade-off in trading. The trade-off is that you could get triggered in at the exact high and then it reverses and stops you out. If it does, you have my permission to drop all the F-bombs you want. You can even throw something. Provided, of course, this doesn't shake you up too much. You're shaking and not stirred, so you can come back to trade another day. But the reason I put that in there about the go and no-go decisions is they're pretty tough. And we've kind of picked those apart in the past, especially in the Q&A sessions, not to soft sell or pimp my stuff. But if you go... In and watch if if ogres is something if if ogres is something that interests you and it should okay because this is one of the ways we help to pay for the longer term trade but boy it takes a lot of discipline you can't get sucked in you got to be really really careful you can't go after mediocre ones and all these other things that are preached but if you really want to learn how to trade them and I think it's worth your while go in and and especially watch the Q and A sessions and eventually. I'm going to parse some of those out and put them under official lessons. But right now, just go into the Q&A sessions, watch as many of those as you can stand, because we really do pick apart the opening gap reversals. And the reason I talk so much about them is not because they're the greatest things in sliced bread. 
although when they work they can be a beautiful thing and i do i do kind of like the fact that you know i'm up 10 grand down 10 grand whatever day after day i like the fact that if you make a little money trading open again reversal that money is yours now of course the flip side the dangerous part is if you lose a little money that money is gone it's not like tomorrow it's going to be part of that up 10 grand down 10 grand it's not like it's going to come back tomorrow but anyway i do think it's worth your while it's something that you want to pursue check the q a now the reason i spend so much time in the q a working on it is because i get so many questions on them and it's a it's a more tricky form of trading whereas the pullback or something like let's say a tko it's kind of like well the entry is above the high of this bar plus a little wiggle room the stops below low plus a little wiggle room entry minus the stop is what this your risk risk plus the entry is what your initial profit start target and you know that's pretty much it you know just Follow the plan. I know, easier said than done. But anyway, so stock gaps lower, sells off fairly hard. And I looked at this and said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look to enter, because it was down much lower than where this little close looks. So I'm going to look to enter at 7.05, okay? Because if it goes all the way up there, the chances of this thing being a true bona fide opening gap reversal are pretty good. And I'm going to risk a half a percent of my account. Now, I'm doing this on multiple accounts, so it does add up a little bit. But the reason I'm using a half percent is I think a half percent is enough, at least in this particular case. But as a general statement, a half percent is plenty to lose on an opening gap reversal because you will lose on some here and there. And you've got to be really careful. The frequency of your losses could be fairly high if you hit a bad streak, and that could add up. So if I'm risking a half a percent on this particular trade, I'm looking at a thousand shares per 100K. Now it's a low price stock, so you're only putting up about 7K margin, which isn't too bad. I'm not doing that crazy day trader thing where they're gonna mortgage, 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 mortgage is a bad word too, right? <laughs> they're gonna margin their account like three times, okay? to take a little day trade like this, and that's just ludicrous, okay? Even ludicrous would say that's ludicrous. Anyway, long story, unless you do all that math, per 100K, half point stop, initial profit target would be what? A half a point plus 705, 755, and I'm gonna walk through this in a lot of detail in just one second. So that's all your parameters. Now, we get a trigger on this, as you can see, and up there is the actual trades and i have this one account that is pretty close to 100k i was talking to one of you guys a few weeks back what can i do better what do you think people want to see and he seemed to think that the live trading was becoming the deal the new deal or whatever and that's something that i might ease into over time and i recently read dalio's book and he talked about radical transparency so i'm kind of easing in that direction i know that it can be a little dangerous to kind of go that route for a variety of reasons because you're you're really opening yourself up but i think i'm going to take little baby steps and start showing you more and more trades at least show you a representative sample and i think that's i think that's fairly safe to do so in this particular case and i did this across i did this across multiple accounts okay but I've got one account that, that could work out pretty good to show you as a possible model because I'm always using the 100K model. So this could be a really good account for that. Anyway, I know I'm digressing here, but I am gonna try to do more and more transparency to at least until it, it, as long as it doesn't hurt too much, okay? Now, if you look at the actual fills, I did get a little skittish on that. I think I have some other fills somewhere between 705 and 710 so it, it was a it was a fast fill now as they said at market wizards and as i often preach sometimes your best fills or your worst fills okay meaning that a lot of people want the stock sometimes your good fills or your worst fills and example linda's husband damon is used to be a huge broker 
and I don't know what he's doing now. I think he's got a software platform and execution platform. He might own the brokerage now. Anyway, he was executing for a large, large trader. It might have been Tudor Jones or someone like that. And I know I'm kind of bastardizing the story, but he went in, Jones or whoever, big hedge fund guy, to buy 400 contracts, big contracts on a piece. And then Damon got him filled because he's known for getting really good fills, got him filled like right to a penny, okay? And then the, the hedge fund guy was like, oh no, he's like, well, what do you mean? Oh no, I got your fill. He says, eh, that's probably not a good thing that I was able to get those shares so easy. So there's a lot of stories like that out there. So fills of 706 for 300 and 710 for 700. And again, this is on account with about 100K in it. So this is a five minute chart intraday. This was the entry there. The initial profit target is up here, okay, at 760. And the stop is down here. Now, something really interesting happened and scary all at once. And I was a little hesitant to show this today, but I think it's it's part of that radical transparency or working towards that radical transparency. How do I show you some of these more advanced techniques? And I guess the flip side is it makes it look like, oh yeah, well that's that's in hindsight, Dave. But this is something that I actually did because of that fast trigger and the stock coming right back in, my auto trail stop shot up on this position real quick and it was just too far too fast. So what I did was I reset it back down after the stock came back in to around the entry. So it's kind of like a reset on the trade. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. If you watch a recording of this, you can go to daylander.com slash contact and ask about it further. And I'll be happy to discuss it. So trailing stop intraday, this is an automated trailing stop, okay? It looks like that. Now here's the actual trades down here, and you can see that the buy again was filled at 706 and 710 on that skittage. And then the take partial profits was at 760. Now that was a limit order for half. So there was a limit order to sell half at a half a point profit. And there was a limit, there was a, excuse me, trailing stop order to sell half at a half a point trailing stop, okay? So how did I figure that out? Well, based on the volatility of stock, it's like, can it move at least a half a point today? And would that be enough for a stop if my stop starts in right below the low? So we're entering at 7.05, the stop is down below the low at like 650-ish, somewhere in that area, because it really shouldn't go back to the new lows if it's truly an opening gap reversal, but just in case it fakes out, give it a little bit more room. And I figured that would be okay for a trade. And then the stop trails the rest of the day, and then we exit on the close. Now, one thing you'll see in hindsight, and we got out about 770 on the close, I guess I say we, I mean me and some of my peeps in the Facebook group, if they followed along like this. Now, one thing you'll notice is I did give up some of those open profits intraday from 810 down to 770, but so what, okay? And, and I know, easier said than done. Now, I wasn't really at watching the screen. I was working on some Christmas gifts at the time. So my wife asked me to build some things for some friends and I'm kind of a nerd. So I like that kind of stuff. We've got some Cypress here that was left over from floating shelves, which is pretty cool. Anyway, before I digress too far. So I had taken a break after my band camp show yesterday. <laughs> and usually after these shows, I'm exhausted because I put so much into them. I'm not saying it to brag. I just say that is how I feel. It's a lot, to, it's a lot of work to do a presentation if you've never done them before. Anyway, so exit was on to close. Yeah, we gave up a little bit in the meantime, but on this one account, you're looking at $560. Now, you got to be careful playing that annualized game, but if you, let's assume about 250 trading days in a year, if you did that every day, that'd be 140K, 140K extra. Now, that's on a, by the way, that's on only a 100K account risking a half of a percent. If you did it across multiple counts, you'd own the world. Now, 
the problem is with the short-term trading is if you're not picking the best and leaving the rest, and even if you are picking the best, leaving the rest, you're going to have some losses. So the same way you got to also think about that flip side. If you lost five hundred and sixty dollars, that would be like losing one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. I'm guilty of that. I'll sweep these one and two K losses under the rug all day long, like they don't mean anything. But then when I have a one or two gay gain, day gain, and I'm like, well, you know what? That's like, uh, you know, whatever, a million dollars a year. <laughs> so you got to be careful playing that game. But anyway, this is how the trade shook out. Now, one thing I want to show you here is I strongly urge you not to trade day trade. But day in the day, in this a day trade? Yeah, it's a day trade, but it's what I call an intraday trade. I know of day traders who are in and out, in and out, in and out all day long. And you got to be really careful doing that. I think you end up chasing your own tail. And I too have to be really careful with these intraday trades because if I am watching the screen too much and not keeping myself busy during a webinar like I am now, my screen's off or building a Christmas gift or my wife this afternoon wants to go for a bike ride. If we can, if I get squeezed in before the close, I'm gonna go do that, spend a couple hours on a bike, get some fresh air. And during that time, I am not watching the screen. So if you were gonna do this kind of trading, Again, I'm not suggesting you go in and out all day long. I would urge you not to. I think we're only wired for so many decisions. That's why inner city ER doctors, AI traffic controllers, and any other people who have to make a lot of decisions in the heat of battle have a really high burnout rate. Now, they don't always work out like this one, but when they do, it can be a thing of beauty. And once I had my order set up, even though I had to make a little adjustment right around the open, I really didn't do anything with this trade all day. Now I did check in a few times, even though I didn't have to, but for the most part, I just let this thing go. And I was, if you want to see that I actually did that, you can go and see that I did a show yesterday. And that show takes, it's only 30 minutes, but when I'm on screen a half an hour before getting ready for that show and then everything and then staying busy working on slides and stuff. Anyway, long story endless. You want to try to be as hands off as possible. And I call this the gym trade. I think years ago, Linda Rasky had a little pattern they called the golf trade. Well, this is what I call the gym trade when these opening gap reversals work out just right. And you're using that automated trailing stop, which you put in after the entry. So it did take a little work on the open. So the red is going to be me actually considering the trade, okay, or placing an order on the actual trade. And then, so the little green here, so the order went in after that red bar, okay. And then I did have to, as I said earlier, do a little bit of discretion by adjusting that trailing stop back down again because of the way it spiked up and came right back in. But once that happened, and then as that stock began to come back in again, I'm going to say, no, Dave, you're not going to fall into that trap of adjusting that stop lower. Let's just let the chips fall where they may. You get stopped out, you get stopped out, drop that F-bomb and move on. And then you could see for all of this time, there was nothing to do until when? The close. Okay, I was outside running a saw, came in checked on things last 15 minutes of trading, and then really there was only something to do in the last five minutes of trading. So you exit those remaining shares on the close. So you wanna to try to be as hands off as possible with these. And I'm just speaking from experience, the more I watch the screen, the more trouble I get into, okay? I have to give you a little confession here. If we're gonna start this new transparency thing, I fired off a day trade that I wasn't supposed to a few days ago because I couldn't stand it. And I immediately had, on this same account, I immediately had a $500 profit in about five minutes. And I said, Dave, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. And I didn't take it, okay? So you can get into a lot of trouble really fast, making too many decisions. And, and you know, by the end of that day, I was extremely tense and stressed out. Okay, one thing that I would urge you to do, if you wanna see the swing to intermediate term trades, in other words, what's in the portfolio. If you're on a trading service, go back in and review last few weeks or whatever, just to get you up to speed if you're new to service. And 
this URL has been shortened to DaveLander.com slash archives. Just go in and watch those archives, as many as you can stand, to get a feel for the methodology, good, bad, and the different. The one thing I've been talking with to a lot of people is that in more recent years, except lately, it's just been pretty amazing, truth be told, but we're probably due for a drawdown, which is, you know, you have to temper yourself, right? But one thing that's been a little harder to make work in more recent years is everything, following everything mechanically. We've had some stops that stop out to the penny. We've had some near misses of one cents to the upside. Well, Dave, why don't you sell your, set your initial profit target one cent lower or your stop one cent lower? I was like, well, if I was that good, again, you never see my fat ass again. Nobody knows for sure. But a little discretion does go a long ways. So if you haven't already done so, join the members area. It's $47 a month. I told my wife, she's like, well, how much is that? She asked me a couple of days ago. She doesn't pay attention. And she's like, $47. You're, like, You're kidding? I was like, no, it's, I, I want to keep it reasonable. I said, I may bump it up once over time, but if anybody's in now, I'm going to keep it at that. And I promise I'll make it worth your while. And, and uh, Jim Freeman in a group a few days ago put up a post says, I love this group. And, and this was warm my heart, make me feel good. And, you know, from a selfish standpoint, I get a lot out of the group too. You guys were talking about the Peloton trade a few days ago or a week ago, I guess. And I wasn't going to take it myself for certain reasons. And the more I looked at it, the more that you guys saw, the more you guys liked it. I finally decided, well, you know what? I think it's worth a shot. So, but I do chime in a few times during the day. If you don't see me, in addition to be super busy, more than likely, there's just not a whole lot of trading that, go, that goes on on that particular day. And a lot of trading, as you know, is waiting. And that's what the members area looks like. We've got courses and all kinds of goodies back there. Anyway, I don't want to self, soft sell you on that too much. Everybody here is already a member, so it doesn't matter. But if you're watching the recording of this, let's uh, shift gears here. And if you guys want to ask about some individual stocks, feel free to start doing so now. And while you guys are thinking, all right, keep them coming. Let's take a look at the overall market. And then I want to drill down to a few sectors. Let's start off with the S&P 500. Bam, winning. <laughs> Off its best levels, as you can see, let's take a look at the spiders. Off its best levels, but still a decent day nonetheless, up a little bit more than half a percent at brand new highs. So far, so good, as you can see, even though we did have this little gap recently. Let's go back to the spiders so we can get a true open. So you had this little gap recently, but so far, so good. Nice little run higher there. NASDAQ composite, so far, so good there too. Not quite at all-time highs if we close now. But uh, I guess uh, day ain't over yet, right? So we'll see what happens. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Look at that. Finally beginning to break out to new highs. I've been bitching about this index forever. It looked like a big picture top forever. Now it's looking a little bit better. Let's not start kissing each other yet until it gets past this overhead supply here and makes some new highs but it certainly looks like it's on its way. Let's take a look at a dollar real quick. Dollar bouncing back sharply today, regaining a lot of yesterday's losses. I think the dollar still looks like a pretty big picture top. It's not a perfect head and shoulders, but it's, it's something toppy, okay? If you kind of draw a big circle around this, it looks like it's in a little bit of trouble. The, as I said in the market in a minute, dollar down, commodities up as a general statement. It's not always negative correlated like that, but as a general statement, it usually is, and usually being a keyword in that sense, but it usually is because commodities are dollar denominated. And if the dollar goes down in value, it's going to take more dollars to buy that commodity. Okay. I know you guys here know that, but we're, Got to get everybody educated. So metals and mining doing okay today in spite of that dollar bouncing back a little bit. Gold, however, getting hit a little bit off its best levels so far, and that might be a little bit of dollar related. Silver, which has looked a lot better than gold coming in a little bit. We're long AUY and gold, AUY. And you could see that it was kind of off to the races a little bit this morning, came back in. Now it's bouncing a little bit. You might get a little bit of a 
late day reversal and all this stuff. I was looking at manufacturing last night. I found it interesting that it's breaking out to new highs. Not a whole lot of setups that I usually see coming out of this area. It tends to be more stodgy companies and, and as opposed to smaller cap stocks that, that I like to trade, but certainly interesting that's doing pretty good. As you would expect, a lot of areas banging out new highs lately. Drugs have been doing pretty good. Health services doing okay in here, as you can see, not too far from brand new highs. And the semiconductors, wow, winning. Look at those bad boys. I'm just chomping at the bit for a nice little uh, opening gap reversal there, even though it's gonna pain me to, to fade a trend, okay? That would be a burning dog type of trade. I don't take those in individual issues. I mean, every now and then, I'm, I just can't stand it. I have to take something. But ideally, you want the stock to be in a longer term downtrend if it is the mother of all opening gaps higher. Anyway, semiconductors doing absolutely fantastic. Look at that, up nearly one and three quarters so looking at all this, you can see it's not a market that you want to short anything. I've had a couple of shorts showing up here and there lately, but I haven't gone after them. All right, let's go ahead and open it up for individual questions. Chris wants to take a look at CDEV. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so he says, I know there are some issues a little further back with the gap and some overhead, but is looking... Phoenix like with a bow tie in the process. Let's throw a bow tie in there. Bam, winning. Okay. It it looks okay, but I think you kind of answered some of your own questions. A few things. This technically, you're right. This is kind of a Phoenix type of strategy down here. Ideally, with the Phoenix, I like to see it go months and months and months and months and months and bottom out, and that washes out a lot of the supply you do speaking of supply you do have some supply here to deal with and that would probably be enough to scare me off i i think you have a fantastic eye i think that looks really really good the bow tie is coming together it's coming off of lows i think it looks fantastic okay but i would pass based on the fact that you have this overhead supply here okay and you got the gap way back here, but hey, who cares about that? It's at $4 a share. If it got all the way to $12 a share, who cares, okay? But yeah, I do look at all that stuff. I mean, so obviously you start over here, bow tie looks good. This looks fantastic, bottoming out, good, good, good. Hmm, a little questionable here, a little questionable here, a little questionable here, a little questionable here, okay? So I would pass based on that, but yeah, that's really good looking, really, really good looking potential setup except for those issues and some of which you've already pointed out. So that's pretty good. Hey, Craig, good to see you, buddy. Haven't seen you in a while. Craig is saying MTNB. And let's go back to MTNB. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting. Well, you did have that mother of all bow ties down here, huh? But it had a lot of problems back then. Let's go to a clean chart, bam. And let's let's back away out, see what's going on. Well, it's if you're trading a emerging trend pattern, a transitional pattern, a bow tie, or a first thrust or something like that, ideally you want to see it coming off of all-time lows. With anything else, in other words, just a generic pullback, you want to see it up in clear air. And if you go way, way back in the chart, you do have some back here, you do have some issues, okay? But that's far enough and further enough back to where it might be worth taking a more short-term look. Now, one thing that I'm noticing, let me get the pen working again. A few things I really like, few things I don't like. One thing is HV is borderline, a little questionable, questionable high, kind of ridiculously high at 91 but it's less than 100 okay so usually anything less than 100 i'll consider but i just realize that if it's getting close to 100 it's going to be dangerous and wild and crazy to trade unless it's some area like uranium or something which just is crazy all the time usually i'll think long and hard when they get well above 100 okay now you can see that this thing has kind of worked its way higher and then worked its way higher and then worked its way higher Notice what I'm drawing in, it's acceleration 
instead of a market that's doing that, okay, it's doing this, okay? So that's a good thing. Now, not enough knockout move. So I'd like to see quite a bit of knockout move, especially since this thing ran up about, what, 400% or whatever, round numbers, okay? So it ran up 400%. You want to see some more knockout move. So maybe on a knockout move, but being low price, super low price like this, high HV, I think it's going to be a very risky trade, but we'll know it when we see it. If it pulls back a little further, knocks a few more people out, it might be worth a shot, okay? Chris says CLVS. CLVS. Yeah, this is a crazy one here too. And this is something that I don't know if I actually put it in the Landry list or not because it was so crazy, but this is one that that has caught my eye. But it's so crazy. I just I can't take it, even though it's like it looks good. And and I know for me with this crazy stocks that I trade, it's hard to believe that it would actually pass. You can see this thing could be crazy, crazy longer term. Keep in mind, this HV is only a 50-day HV. I don't know if you can see that on your screen. So last 50 days have been pretty crazy on this. And yeah, I hear you, man. It looks it looks pretty good. You know, if you were to take the scaling off of the chart, okay, and just look at the chart, you've got a nice accelerated uptrend, nice pullback. And remind me, did I actually put this in a Landry list or not? I know I wrote it down, but it's one of those things where it's like, can't do it, okay? But yeah, okay, it wasn't a Landry list, cool. Yeah, I'm glad at least showed it publicly, but it just was a little too crazy even for me. But man, it looks good. It's a good looking chart. So like it a lot. And let's uh, clean this up. Could not be steeper. Could be a little more steeper, non steeper. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's crazy. It's a crazy one. But yeah, short term and medium term looks fantastic, but just too crazy, even by Big Dave standards. I had a fun worker with me once and, and just we, we couldn't work it out. I think it was just we were in early, early phases, but I just think that that my stocks were just too crazy for him. And keep in mind that I was recommending more thicker stocks so he could get in uh, with its fun and all. But uh, it just didn't work out. <laughs> but, you know, as a small private trader, it's I do like being able to be nimble because. I can go in and take these little trades and pick up a few crumbs here and there, especially on something like an opening gap reversal. Whereas I think if you were running any size of money, it'd be a little bit harder. So we do have certain advantage being the small private trader in some cases. We could be a little bit more nimble with some of these things. Okay, any more questions? While we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for coming. Check the schedule or check the homepage and I'll update the homepage as soon as I decide. So we might not have a show next week and then the next couple of weeks, I think if I did my math right, might be, I think Christmas falls on a Thursday as does New Year's. So there won't be any shows on those days. If we don't talk between now and the weekend, everybody have a great weekend. Any unanswered questions, daylander.com slash contact. If you're in the Facebook group, you know the routine, just ask the questions in there and I'll get to them as soon as possible. And also, by the way, thank you guys for answering questions. Very proud of you. You've been doing as good a job as I could, and it's saved me a lot of typing. So thank you so much. All right, everybody have a great weekend, and hope to see you guys next show. Thank you so much.